Next, we are looking at entrepreneurship rejuvenation. Entrepreneurship rejuvenation. So here, we are going to look at, we are going to give you certain course outline under entrepreneurship rejuvenation. The first thing is, who is an entrepreneur? Who is an entrepreneur? The second thing is, when does business begin? When does business begin? Number three. Number three, how to start from zero. So you see this our cost and the third one is how to go how to go from zero to hero. Then the fourth one is importance of having importance of having a vision. So these are the four things we discuss under entrepreneurship rejuvenation. Number one, who is an entrepreneur? Number two, when does business begin? Number three, how to go from zero to hero. Number four, importance of having a vision. So we are going to start with who is an entrepreneur? Who is an entrepreneur? Who is an entrepreneur? So an entrepreneur is someone who sees societal problem and then profiles and then goes to get the solution to the societal problem, profiles the solution all in a bid to make profit. Let me come again. An entrepreneur is someone who sees societal problem. Rather than running away from the societal problem, he goes back or she's go back and gets solution to those societal problems while she offers those or he, or he offers those solutions, then he makes profit from them. That is an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is not a sole proprietor. An entrepreneur is not somebody who just gets up one day and says, I want to start selling provision. I want to sell cement. That's not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur must find a societal problem. So the big question is, how do we find societal problems? Societal problems can come in form of, let me show you education, educational problems. They can come in form of energy problems. They can come in form of business problems. They can come in form of environmental problems. They can come in form of family problems. They can come in form of spiritual problems. They can come in form of construction problems. Are you seeing how people choose an area to come and become an entrepreneur? Look for an area that has a problem. Go to your community. In your community, there you will find that there is a problem in your community. But the problem we have is that we, most people are looking for the white collar job. So there are opportunities for them in their community, but what do they do? They pretend as if they are not seeing it. You leave your house in the morning and there's this flood everywhere. Flood is not an environmental problem. Flood is an environmental problem. Okay, if you say I'm not interested in flood, no problem. How about all the small, small business in your area that are not growing? Don't you know you can set up an organization to help small businesses grow? And they will come and learn from you and they will, be, they will pay you money. If that's not your area of concern, what of energy? Energy, look at the power failure in Nigeria and power failure in Africa. You can set up a solar panel company and you make solar panels and people will be buying your solar panels. That's energy problem. What of education? See what is happening to the education. Education is going down, down, down. Graduates come out of school and there is no job for them. Why? Because they have been taught theoretical things. You can set up a place where you teach graduates and teach job seekers how to set up businesses and play down on white collar job. These are problems. These are things that will make you an entrepreneur. You, there are societal problems. Most people are not ready to go and find any problem. Remember what we said in our training under leadership. In our leadership training, we said if you need money, money does not come to people who look for money. Money does not come to people who love money. Money comes to people who know how to create money. How do you create money? Find a societal problem. So I want all of you to learn carefully. If you meet anybody who tells you he loves money, just run away from that person. Money runs away from people who love money. Why does money run away from them? Because money does not respect you if you love it. Money respects you if you learn how to create it. So now, this is how you create it. Now we are showing you. Don't tell me there is no area you are interested in. If there is no area you are interested in, then you must know that you must find out what is also wrong with you. Because what is wrong with you is a problem. You can use your own self and make money again. 
Now, the next one is family problem. We know there are too many family problems. Divorce here and there is family problem. Spiritual problem. People have no relationship with their creator. You can set up programs where you teach people. If you don't want to teach people, you can set up a particular avenue where people who do not even know where they, why they are created at the first place, you begin to teach them or something like that. Then we have construction problems. Houses are falling. Have you, have, have you heard of collapse building before? Don't you have collapse building? It's called, if when buildings are collapsing and people are dying, is that not a problem? That's a societal problem. Somebody can say, I love construction so much, I will go into this area and produce cement that is very strong, that people will not fall. That's societal. This is how you make money. This is how you become a, an entrepreneur. You must find a societal problem. Check all the entrepreneurs. All of them found a societal problem, and that's what they are thriving in. All. They found one, and they worked there. So that is who an entrepreneur is. An entrepreneur, we have said, is someone who what? Entrepreneur is somebody who sees societal problems, provides solutions to them, and then make money. See, it's not free of charge. You make money. Then number two is what? What is number two? When does business begin? All right, now, business begin when vision is captured. Let me come again. Business does not begin when you open a shop. Some people think that until they get a shop, pay shop rent, or get an office, pay office rent, that's when their business has started. No, that's wrong. Business begins when you capture a vision in your heart. For example, you come to a village and nobody wears slippers. They're all working on barefoot. Instead of you to say, now, wow, we'll never return to this village. Nobody in this village is wearing slippers. That's business for you. That's vision. You capture vision and think of how to go back and produce the cheap slippers for them. You, once you capture that vision, business has begun for you. Most people complain about problem when God is opening opportunity for them. That's it, you're crying. Now, wow, wow, we we'll never return here. They are defecating everywhere. Everywhere, they shit, shit, shit. Let me tell you, one of the biggest billionaires in Nigeria today, his business is shit business. He started when he was posted to a village where there was no toilet. And then this was, the, he now created what? A mobile train, where, a mobile car, where people can come and defecate and they pay him money. Today, he's a multi-billionaire, he's a Nigerian. So you see that vision begins when you capture, business begins when you capture a vision. What problem are you looking for? What is that thing around you that, is, that, you, that you're complaining about? Let me tell you a secret in life. Any problem you complain about, anything you always complain about, you are meant you are born to create a solution to it. Let me repeat that again. Any problem you complain about, you always complain about this problem. In fact, this problem, anytime you see it, it does not make me sleep well. There are some people, if they see divorced people, they can't sleep well. There are some people, if they see small, small children who are not going to school, they are carrying small, small trays, selling pure water. They, they will be crying in their hearts. Oh, why, why are these children are supposed to be in school? Let me tell you, if that is happening to you in any area, that is nature telling you that is the area you're supposed to go and provide solution and become an entrepreneur and become a billionaire. This is another way of discovering who you're born to be. All right, the third one we have is, what is number three? Number three is how to go from zero to, zero. to, zero to hero. This is very important. What do we mean by zero to hero? Zero means when you tell most people start a business, they'll say, I don't have money. That's zero. Okay, but do you want to start a business? Truly, I want to start, but I don't have money. Do you want to start a business? I want to start, but I don't have money. Do you really want to start? I want to start, but I don't have money. If, you, if that is the group you belong to, that means you are here. You are in zero. Now, I want to teach you how to move from zero to become a hero. A hero is somebody that is celebrated in an area. If you become a top supplier of cement in Nigeria, Nigeria will one day celebrate you. Now, if you tell us your story when you started from nothing, when you begin to tell us, there was a time I had no one era. So now, how do you now move from having nothing to something? Let me tell you. Most of the businesses you do without money are the businesses that will even take you higher than the businesses you must start with money. Maybe you didn't get that. Most of the businesses that you do and become very wealthy are those businesses you start with nothing. So you ask me, what, what kind of business will I start with nothing? Let me give you an example. In my place, there are a lot of people. I mean, I'm in Nigeria and I'm in the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja. There are a lot of people who travel outside the country. When they are coming back, they need somebody to come and clean their house for them. Do you need money to do that business? 
You don't need money. So for those of you saying, I, I don't have anything, you are just giving fake excuses. You are a lazy person. Get up. There are things you can do without money. Are you paying any money to do that one? No. So you will say, okay, some people are so lazy that they will say, eh, but I don't know anybody now that is looking for, what do you mean? You, don't know? you must get up from here. Those people too, they are, not, they, are somewhere, they, are so, they are looking for people who are coming to knock at their gate. Somebody has BSC and they say, they must come and meet me in my house. No, you have BSC, you move around. You move around. You say, okay, I, I, I don't know, I've never painted. Let me tell you something. I have never painted a house before. But when the condition were around, I painted my house. When I called somebody to come and paint for me and he called big amount, I said, what is that? I bought the paint, I mixed it. I wore three quarters and I painted my house. And people come to my house and they say, wow, this paint is, who did this painting? I'll be laughing. But I paint, I've never painted before. Now, somebody can call you, come and assist me in painting. You say, no, I've never painted before. I'm a graduate. I read biology. I read physics. I read engineering. I read pharmacy. Excuse me, you read pharmacy, but you say start a business, you say you don't have anything. Somebody is teaching you, I come and carry a whole ladder for me. You say, how can I graduate from the university and be holding a ladder for somebody? That's not what I want. You are not ready to move from zero to hero. You are looking, you are looking for overnight success. You are looking for the big NMPC job. You are looking for the oil company job that will give you 750000 They are there, but they are ready to get. Why? The competition for those jobs you are looking for are stiff. So what do you do? Get up from your slumber. Get up from that bed you're listening to me now. Stand up. Go to your bedroom. Take your bath and walk out the street. There are jobs waiting out there for you. But you need to do what? Brace up your mind and say, I have nothing, but I have something here. Then if you have something here, then you have God. Don't say you have God when you are lying in the bed. You are deceiving yourself. You must come out. Then God comes out with you when you come out. So go out and look for something. Go out and look for something. You must not get exactly what you are looking for the first time. For example, now let me give you an instance. If I say I want to be a lecturer in the university, I want to lecture up in the university, for example, I have a PhD. And now if those jobs are not forthcoming, and somebody tells me that he wants uh, five bags of Irish potato, I can tell him that, please give me that business. I'll go to the farm and buy it and bring for you and collect my own. Why? Because I must do something. You can borrow. Some of you say, I don't have anybody to borrow. You see, let me tell you one thing about people that want to remain poor. Poor people have plenty of excuses. One of the signs you know that this person is a poor pet thinker. Poverty is not how much you have in your account. Too. Poverty is but in your mind. Start a business, I don't have money. Go and borrow money so you can do, and I don't have anybody to borrow from. Or I go and find a societal problem, I don't know any problem in the society. Or I go and look for those people that are looking for people that will help them paint the house, I don't know anybody that wants to paint the house. Okay, look for those people that will pack load and you pay for that, I don't know anybody. Are you seeing, is this not a poor mentality? This person is not ready to think. He just wants that big white collar job where he will sit down in an interview. Then they say, yeah, you did very well. Or, yeah, tomorrow, come and collect your appointment letter. And they are there, but while you are waiting for them, do something. While you move from zero, I am telling you that the moment you start something, there is a law of nature they call law of small beginnings. Pay attention while I explain to you the law of small beginnings. The law of small beginnings is a principle enacted by nature, not by any human being. Nature enacted the principle that anybody who starts small and maintain that small thing consistently, then once you do consistently, there's a spirit, the cause spirit of consistency. It will now come on your business. Once it comes on your business, it will now elevate your business. From small, people will start buying. Before you know, customers from nowhere. You say, I don't know what is happening to my business. Everybody is becoming interested. Listen, they are becoming interested because you are respecting the law of small beginnings. Before you know, that small be business begins to grow. I started this business at the back of my house. So I was planting this water leaf for my personal use. So. But now, before I know now, the whole market in... Delta State are looking for me. The whole market in Abuja, the whole market in Lagos State, the whole market in Zambia are all looking for my leave. Why? Because I maintain consistency. At the end of the day, the small business becomes a big business. At the end of the day, you start exporting. Ask most of the exporters in the world. This one, I'm daring you. Ask most of the exporters in Nigeria how they started and in the world. They will always tell you they started by being the... They didn't even know they would start exporting. They didn't know that someday will come, they'll be needing their product in other countries. Ask most of them, they will tell you like that. But our problem is that our young people these days, they just want overnight success. They want overnight... They call it overnight hammering. Overnight hammering is the reason why we have too many Yahoo boys. Overnight hammering is the reason why we have too many G-boys. Overnight hammering is the reason why we have... Young boys that are 25 years, they are ready to sleep with 90 years old woman that will give them green card in another country.
of visa. You can see all these stupidities because of laziness, lazy mentality. They don't want to start small. That's the problem. So the next thing we are going to look at, you see now, anybody who starts little, I've told you how you move from zero to hero. You move from zero to hero because once you start something, the law of small beginning backs that thing you're doing and keep pushing you, push you until you reach a stage where you become celebrated in that business. Then you have moved from what? Zero to hero. Let me tell you something. Any law that is enacted by nature, respect that law. If National Assembly states a law, for example, and say a man should not marry a man, it's not bad, but that is the law enacted by National Assembly. People can flaunt it and no repercussion, but any law that nature enacted, don't flaunt it. Law of small beginnings enacted by nature, so don't flaunt it. Don't wait that it must be big. Start small, and the spirit of consistency comes, and then you become a hero in that area. Then the next topic is what? Importance of having a vision, yes. Why do you need a vision? Why do you need a vision? Let me tell you, the first reason why you need a vision is because vision gives direction, not speed. Vision gives direction, not speed. There's a difference between direction and speed. Am I right? Yeah. Direction means this is the right road. Speed means somebody can be on the wrong road, but he's speeding. Somebody has gone far, but he's on the wrong road. Where somebody is taking it gradually, but it's on the right road. It's better for you to be on the right road and you are going gradually than to be on the wrong road and you've gone far. So vision helps you to be on the right road. How does vision help you to be on the right road? Vision shows you what you are born to do. Vision will say, see, even though all everybody is going into makeup now, makeup is not what you are born to do. You are born to do what? You are born to be in the area of fine art. You are born to be in the area of cooking. You are born to be in the area of photography. You are born to be in the area of painting. You don't follow what the crowd is doing. You follow what you're born to do. Once you follow what you're born to do, then you fall into direction and not speed. Speed doesn't mean the person is running. Speed means that you are doing what everybody is doing because they say that is what is trending. Young people now are much interested about what is trending. They go to social media, they see social media fake life, and they want to live the life of social media. At the end of the day, they frustrate themselves because most of the life they watch on social media are all fake life. The people that you're seeing on social media forming happiness, they are dying. Are you not hearing of the divorces these days? Why? Because when they can no longer hide that fake life, you explode. So you don't need to copy anybody. Find your gift. Find your talent so that you'll be in the right direction. That is the number one importance of finding or of having a vision. Then the second importance of having a vision is that vision brings about specialization. Vision brings about what? Specialization. What is specialization? Specialization means that you kill the ideology of jack of all trade, master of none. There are people that are jack of all trade. Can you paint? I can paint. Can you repair, the, uh, can you do roofing? I can do roofing. Can you do electrical? Yes. Plumbing? Yes. Drawing? Yes. Uh, hairdo? Yes. Massaging? Cooking? That's the jack of all trade. Now, you can never be known and celebrated that way. The only way you can be known is when you specialize on something. Find something you are very good at. Find something you have talent, passion for. Find something you give so much attention to, something you know you love doing with or without money. What you do is that if you find something you know you can do so much, you love so much, with or without money, you are there. You can do it whether there's money, whether there's no money. What you do is this. Pick that area. Learn more about the area. Make sure that the skills in that area, you learn every skill that concerns that particular area. Specialize and master that area. And let me tell you what happened. When they are looking for somebody who does that particular thing, you are the first person they think about. I want to, let me tell you something now. Assuming I come to your territory, let's say, let's assume now you stay in Port Harcourt, or let's say you stay in Lagos, or you stay in Asaba, or you are in Wari, or you are in Abuja, I can come to your own territory. And then I will tell you that in your territory, people are selling shoes. If I want to come and dominate and specialize in your own territory, I will not sell the shoes that everybody is selling. For example, I find myself in Asaba. Now, I don't stay in Asaba in Delta State. But if I go to Asaba, now I can dear everybody staying in Asaba. There is nobody that sells shoes for holy nurses. I dear them. If there's anybody in Asaba that sells shoes 
for only nurses. The person should contact me. Nobody. Now I go to Asaba, I begin to sell shoes for only nurses. Only nurses. Somebody will say, ah, this man is going to suffer. I'm not going to suffer. I know what I'm doing. It's a matter of time. Before you know it, nurses all over Delta State will be looking for me. Because why? I will sell different kinds of shoes for only nurses. Before you know, people from where? Neighboring states. Before you know, outside the country. Before you know, my, my, my nurses all over the whole world will hear about me. Because I'm the only person who sells shoes for nurses. This is how you specialize. You don't open a shop and you sell shoes for men, sell shoes for women, sell shoes for children, sell pampas, sell sanitary pad, sell wivon, sell cup, sell chair. Ha, ha, you say you want to make it. That's just a sh that's to show that you don't understand business. Business is not by doing plenty things. Business is by taking one, learning all the skills, growing in the skill, becoming authority. Let me tell you one thing that is very important to every human being listening to me now. Listen. The creator said he created you to do what? To dominate. Do you know what it means to dominate? To dominate simply means go, come on earth, find something you are good at, specialize on it, learn all the skill, and become authority in that area. And if you do that, I will bless you. That's the creator talking. He says he will bless you. That means that nobody will come and shift you away from that place. Where people will come from and be purchasing whatever you're doing, forget about that one. God does not tell lies. So if he says, go ye into the world, and do what? And multiply and dominate. People think he's just producing children and God. Yes, producing children is part of the multiplying. But what God is saying is that when he says you should go in and multiply, see what he's saying? He says, go ye into the world and do what? Multiply and dominate. What he's saying is that if you specialize in anything in life, hmm, multiply that particular thing you specialize you have a branch of it in Lagos, you have a branch of it in Abuja, you have a branch of it in Cairo, you have a branch of it in Accra, you have a branch of it in London. That same thing. Are you seeing it? You are multiplying yourself. That's what the creator was saying when he said multiply, then dominate. Then that means if they talk about shoe for nurses, they mention your name. That is what it means to dominate an area. I hope you understand. If you follow this principle, I'm telling you, poverty will be far away from you. Poverty can't come close to you. Even if somebody invoke the spirit of poverty, say, go and meet that man. The spirit will say, I can't go. The man is obeying the law of God. Anybody that obeys the law of God must succeed. Let me repeat it again. Any man or woman that obeys the law of God must succeed in life. Once God states a law and you say you obey God's law, you must succeed if you obey God's law. So thank you very much for listening to this wonderful session. You're welcome to our career path session where we teach you career path progression and how to select career for yourself. All right, here are the topics we'll be looking at under career paths. Under career paths, we'll tell you, we'll discuss what is a career. Number two, how to choose a good career. Then number four, we call it career growth. So these are the areas we'll be looking at. What is a career? How to choose a good career for yourself? Then career growth. So the first one is, what is a career? Now a career is an occupation. A career is the occupation you have chosen to do for the rest of your life. An occupation is where you intend to put in effort so that you will gain something. If you choose to sweep, you'll be sweeping and you'll be collecting money. That's the occupation you have chosen. So if you choose that, that becomes your career. So our goal in career path is to teach you how to sustain that particular career you chose so that you can grow and get to the peak of that particular career that you chose for yourself. All right, so that is what a career is, an occupation that you, chose, that you have chosen. Then the next thing is how to choose a good career for yourself. How to choose a good career for yourself. How do you choose a good career for yourself? Nobody can choose a good career for you. You know the best one. We say career is an occupation. You know what you like. Anybody who wants to choose a career should not consider first what he studied in school. The person should first consider what he loves to do. Let me repeat this part. It's so important. Anybody who wants to choose a career for himself should not first of all consider the course he studied in school. The person should first consider the area of his passion. What do you really love to do? This should be your first point of 
thought when you want to choose career for yourself. Do you know why? When the career you choose for yourself seem not to be bringing anything as you expect, you can stand in that place. Why? If you have already chosen it as your passion. Passion will keep you going. But now the issue is most people will say, okay, if my passion, now if the job I'm looking for now, the passion, if the passion I have, the job is not available for that passion I have, what do I do? And I don't have passion for the other one that is available. Should I ignore it? No, you can't ignore it. You can start with something so that at least you don't uh, remain idle at home. Because we say an idle man is what? Is devil's yeah. workshop. All right, so how to choose a career for yourself? We say the first thing you check your what? Your passion. Are we together? Now, the next thing after checking your passion, the next thing you consider is consider the modus operandi of that particular organization. Modus operandi. Modus operandi means the method of operation. How do they do in this organization? Is it an organization if I work with two years and I say I want to retire, they will allow me? Is it an organization if I work with five years and I say, okay, I want to, I've gotten somewhere, they will allow me to go? There are some organizations you get a job, you cannot just leave. If you get a job with the Nigerian army, for example, you cannot just wake up one morning and say you don't want to do it again. You will do it again. They will set up serious particular panel for you before they allow you to go. That you're going may take six, seven years. Before you know, you change your mind and remain there. So you must understand the modus operandi of the particular people. Those people that say, I want to work in uh, FRS, I want to work in NMPC, I want to work in Chevron. Let me tell you something. If you get a job in an oil company and they post you in onshore, they have onshore, offshore. If they post you in onshore, offshore, and they say you are going to stay in the sea, 